Hey guys, the objective of today's video is to go through the derivation for infinite slope analysis. So let's now look at an infinite slope with no water. So this is our slope here, inclined at an angle of alpha above the horizontal. This here is our soil element. It has a width of B and a depth of D, and along the slope surface, this length is represented by B divided by cosine alpha. Now the soil element also has a weight force, which is represented by this here, W. And this W force can be broken down into a tang tangential force component, represented by T, and a normal force component, represented by N. And this normal force component is also balanced by this normal force here. Now we're interested in this force T because this is the force that is actually causing this soil element to want to slide down the slope surface. And this force is represented by, uh, sorry, this force is resisted by this force TF here, which represents the shear strength of the soil. So this soil element here has a unit depth into the page. And we'll be using effective stress analysis. So let us first consider the disturbing force. So the disturbing fo the, the disturbing force is the force which causes the soil element to want to tend to slide down the slope surface. So that would be going in this direction here and that would be T. So T which is the tangential force component of W it is represented by T equals W sine alpha. Now W to find W which is the force due to the weight of a soil that can be found through multiplying gamma t, the unit weight of the soil, by the dimensions of a soil element, which would be b and d. So rewriting this, t would equal to gamma t multiplied by b multiplied by d sine alpha. Now we also have a resisting force. And the resisting force obviously resists the, the disturbing force T. And our resisting force in this case is TF. Now before I write down the force for TF, let us first consider the failure criterion. Where we have tau F equal to the cohesion plus the normal stress multiplied by tan phi dash. So now our force TF would be the integral of this failure criterion. And the reason for this is because in order to in order for the disturbing force to successfully cause this soil element to want to slide down the slope, that would mean that this force would have to surpass the maximum shear strength of the soil. So that is, that is why we are using the failure criterion for the resisting force. So I'll just break up this integral here. So that equals to the integral of the cohesion Plus, and I can bring out tan phi dash because it's a constant. And dA just represents the area which these stresses are acting on, which would be the base, the base of the soil element. So if I introduce a new term here, I'll call this capital C, which equals the integral of the cohesion term. This just becomes 
So DA is the base of the soil element, which is the area of the base of the soil element, sorry. So that's B divided by cosine alpha multiplied by unit depth. So this equals, this just becomes C dash multiplied by B cosine alpha multiplied by one, which I won't write here. And I'll also introduce a new term, so N. This represents the normal force, which is the int which will be the integral of the normal stress multiplied by the area which it is acting on. And this just becomes W cosine alpha. So therefore N equals gamma T B D cosine alpha. So rewriting what TF is now that we have defined terms for these integrals TF equals capital C plus N tan phi dash now the slope will fail when T equals TF so going back to our soil element when T equals to the ultimate shear strength of the soil, that's when the soil element will slide down the sl slope surface and that's when we have slope failure. So let me now define a factor of safety. Which I'll call F for short. This equals to the resisting force divided by the disturbing force so it's a ratio uh, so it's a fraction and now writing in the terms that I've derived above here F equals C dash multiplied by B over cosine alpha so that's this C term here plus gamma t b d cosine alpha tan phi dash so this term up here is just tf divided by gamma t b d sine alpha so this term here is capital t So we can now simplify this, we can cross out all the B's, and I can multiply this cosine alpha up just to make this a little bit neater to look at. So F equals C dash plus gamma T D cosine squared alpha tan phi dash divided by gamma t d cosine alpha sine alpha so this expression here represents the factor of safety for this situation of an, of an infinite slope with no water so let's now look at the effect of water on infinite slope analysis. So we have our same soil element here on a slope. This here is our water table. And within the soil there is seepage flow which travels through the soil. Now the height of the water table is represented here by DW and the the perpendicular length or I guess height to the water table is defined by DW cosine alpha. Now say I was to stick a piezometer into the soil here. The water would rise up to this height here. And this, this height here is known as the effective height. And that is defined by DW 
cosine squared alpha. So this is essentially the cosine component of this length here. So recall that our resisting force is defined as TF which equals capital C plus N dash tan phi dash. Now because we have to consider the effect of water, we'll be using N dash, the effective normal force. So the effective normal force N dash equals N, which is the total normal force, minus U, which is a force due to pore water pressure. So N equals W cosine alpha, which equals the gamma T B D cosine alpha, as I defined earlier before. And U which I'll just write over here. U is found by gamma W multiplied by DW cosine squared alpha multiplied by B over cosine alpha. Now let me first just draw how how the force U relates to our situation here. So U would be here, turning this to N dash, so N equals N dash plus U. So the force U would be acting on the base of our soil element. So it would be gamma W multiplied by the effective height of the water table, so DW cosine squared alpha multiplied by B, cos B divided by cos cosine alpha times 1. And I can, I can simplify this down a bit. So I can cross out the cosine here on the square. So U equals gamma W D W multiplied by B cosine alpha. So now I can use these terms to define N dash. So N dash equals brackets gamma T D minus gamma W DW B cosine alpha. And C which I've already defined earlier. That's equal to the effective cohesion multiplied by B divided by cosine alpha. So our disturbing force is the same as before, T equals W sine alpha, which equals gamma T B D sine alpha. Now if I was to write out the factor of safety again, this time considering the effect of water, so factor of safety equals resisting force divided by disturbing force. So this becomes C dash plus gamma T D minus gamma W D W cosine squared alpha tan phi dash divided by gamma t d sine alpha cosine alpha and in this situation we assume that gamma t is the same for both above and below the water table So let's now consider a special case for cohesionless soils. So that means C dash will equal to zero. So C 
also special case. Cohesionless soils. So C dash equals zero. So with water, the factor of safety becomes gamma T D minus gamma W D W multiplied by cosine squared alpha tan phi dash. divided by gamma t d sine alpha cosine alpha now I can then break up this term into two terms gamma t d cosine squared alpha tan phi dash divided by gamma t d sine alpha cosine alpha minus gamma w dw cosine squared alpha tan phi dash divided by gamma t d sine alpha cosine alpha and the reason for breaking this up is because it allows us to simplify this term further so gamma t d cancels out cosine cancels out this one here as well. So if I now divide both fractions by cosine alpha, the cosine alpha, sorry, if I divide the denominator and numerator by cosine alpha, the uh, cosine alpha in the numerator will disappear and the sine alpha in the denominator will become tan alpha. So tan alpha, uh, tan phi dash divided by tan alpha minus gamma w dw tan phi dash divided by gamma t d tan alpha. So since we have tan phi divided by tan alpha in both fractions we can factorize this so therefore f equals to 1 minus gamma w dw divided by gamma t d multiplied by tan phi dash divided by tan alpha now for cohesionless soils with no water table this term just disappears. So we just get F equals to tan phi dash divided by tan alpha. Okay, so just to recap on the infinite slope derivations. So for an infinite slope with no water, we derive that the factor of safety equals to this term. So this is when we have cohesion as well. So in a cohesive soil with water table, we derive the factor of safety to be this term. And for Cohesionless soils, in the presence of water, the factor of safety is this term here. And without water, the factor of safety simplifies down to this term here. And that's it for today's video. Hope this helps, guys.